Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the Lightroom Blog Channel. And in this video we're actually going to talk about Lightroom. But in this case we're going to talk about the application formerly known as Lightroom. So Lightroom has become Lightroom Classic. Now don't get this as an idea that Lightroom is being abandoned, far from it. There's been a lot of work put into it in performance to try and get it more up to scratch in keeping with the power of today's computers. It is old code base, so they have brought in a new cloud-based solution as well, which they've now renamed to Lightroom CC. This was formerly seen last year at Adobe Max as Project Nimbus. But this is a cloud-centric ecosystem, which involves Lightroom CC on the desktop, Lightroom CC for iOS, Lightroom CC for the web, and Lightroom CC for Android. So this is a whole ecosystem of similar applications, but just on different devices. But we're not talking about that in this video. In this video, we're really just talking about what are the changes? So performance has been the big thing for Lightroom Classic. So it is all about speeding up workflows and getting tools to help with that. So as part of that, they've done things like changed the camera raw cache for the minimum size preview, which uh, helps obviously with larger monitors. And they've done a develop walkthrough performance. So they pre-cache images that are before and after the current image. So when you go to the next image, it's already preloaded and should load faster, for example. Uh, other things that have been added is that they now have obviously support for uh, Photoshop elements. And let's see what we have here. I'm just gonna check my list. We have sort order post import. There was a thing with Lightroom 6 when you imported and it would bring in things in added order, which got really annoying. And um, you can now, capture time is now one of the main import options so that you can have the capture time in order, which is great. You should be able to get through uh, stuff much faster than with Lightroom 6 in terms of uh, using the sliders. Uh, the brush, brushing has also been enhanced. If you brushed in a circular pattern, you would get jagged edges, but now this has been improved. You now have additional metadata options. So you can now choose everything and you can have all except camera data go out and um, it's not possible for DNG on uh, original export though because of the fact that obviously the information is stored within the DNG itself. Uh, Canon and Nikon have had additional tethering support added for their newest SDKs. Now the process version has been updated in this but it's slightly different than what we've had before. Uh, so I'm just going to show here what we have with process version. So we go to process version we now see that we have one, two, and three, and four. So 2003 is now one, 2010, 2012, which is the most recent update. And now we have version four, which is just the current one with no year. So the idea is just that it's not giving you that year information. Uh, what is the difference? Well, it's to do with one of the new features, and that is the range mask feature. Uh, they've changed how auto mask works in this to try and make it more efficient because it was very inefficient and not necessarily great. So they now have the range mask, which allows you to do kind of manual auto corrections, if that makes sense. So you're able to create a mask based on a color or based on luminance within the image. Now I will cover that in a separate video as its own thing, because I think it should stand on its own as a feature, the same way you learn a feature, rather than being buried in a half an hour long video. Uh, so this is, this, that, and the reason for that is that I want this to be a short video. So it's just a chatty video. Uh, range mask is enabled under three and four. Uh, but the thing about it is that uh, if you don't have auto mask on it, on your image already, it will automatically be jumped to process version four. I would say, you know, just go to process version four. That's the honest, honest truth because it will improve everything in it. Um, in Lightroom 6, we got GPU enhancements and now there are further GPU enhancements uh, here. So you should see improvements in uh, walking through images, especially loading one-to-one -one images. Um, there should be more responsive adjustment brushes. Uh, again, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be seeing color glitches and moving sliders, and it will help with the spot healing brushing as well as that. So, it, you know, it obviously is there just to generally improve the brush speed as well when using brushes. Uh, so, to get uh, the most advantage out of this, you really need to be using uh, iOS 10.11 on Mac or Windows 10.0.14399, let me read that properly, 14393, um, as well as something, you know, that is a supported graphics card as well. So what else is going on under the hood? Well, catalog loading times have been improved. Um, now, uh, what else is there? A great new thing that we've been looking for for a while now is to have filter type in the import dialog. 
So I'm just going to pull up the import dialog. And this is just going to bring up an import. I'm not importing anything particular. And we can see here we have a file type and media type. So that way it does have an opportunity. So it'll, you know, search between JPEGs and raw files, which is really, really cool. Um, there is a new embedded preview system, which is there to try and match things like photo mechanic and things like that. So whereas before, when you selected embedded and sidecar images, it would try and create a preview immediately. This allows you to use the embedded previews for much longer. So obviously you won't have any uh, accurate color because you don't have Lightroom's color applied. It's just based on the actual JPEG that was created by the camera. Uh, you also need to turn off, there's an option uh, for render uh, embedded previews into standard previews during idle time. So if you leave that off, then it will leave it as the embedded preview until you make a change in develop or in quick develop. Um, so you will get an embedded preview uh, bezel on the file when it comes in and that will just let you know that it's an embedded preview and the idea is that you will be able to speedily run through your images and make selections based on critical sharpness and things like that now because it is based on the embedded preview uh, mirrorless cameras especially sony don't have full size previews so in this case if you want to make use of that workflow you need to shoot raw plus large jpeg so that you will get the benefit of that the JPEG will be treated as a sidecar file and it doesn't matter if you have the option for treat JPEGs as a separate file ticked or not, it will still use the JPEG. They will still be imported and they will still be used for the embedded preview. So the idea is just to give you a speedier workflow for making image selects to make it fa as fast as the programs that do use embedded previews already. The libraries for preview generation have also been updated to make preview generation faster. And the idea is that you can do uh, a faster walkthrough with minimal previews as well for that reason. Uh, there's also faster switching to the develop module from library. So when you switch between them, it should be faster. So I'm just going to come out of here. And so if I go E, D, E, D, E, D, so we can see that everything's available there. So we got much faster switching. Th there's another thing as well is for if you've got very high resolution standard previews, this has also been in increased. And um, what happened before was you would have a maximum preview size of 2K, but now it's been made much larger as well. So what you need to do in this case is go to catalog settings and make sure that in file handling, standard preview size is set to auto. Now, as you can see, this is actually 5,120 pixels. So my camera 6,000 pixels. So anything smaller than that will be you know obviously created so it's almost a one-to-one -one. but the idea with this is that it just gives you way more uh, scope this is a 5k monitor uh, so it saves getting you the loading thing all the time basically so and um, multiple merge operations so if you're doing uh, panels or hdrs they've tried to manage that a little bit better and with slideshow and video you have a new library as well for slideshow uh, the big thing of that was um apple's live photos are getting green frames and this will help remove that as well uh, there are additional search terms being added to smart collections so the under the title field you have is empty and isn't empty this was all avail available with them um, caption and metadata and um, you can also create a smart collection using lens profile uh, corrections so that you can easily or correlation rather so you can easily create a collection based off images with the lens uh, profile that has been applied okay uh, you can also delete collections faster. Big collections used to be a problem deleting, you used to have to wait for them. And um, the sync library has also been updated. Uh, so that's pretty much a run through the new stuff that is there. The biggies are of course performance, uh, the new range mask with the process version to go with that. And then of course the embedded preview workflow for getting true faster. That is of course also one of the performance enhancements as well. So folks, I will be taking a look at range mask specifically, and I will be doing the embedded preview workflow on its own specifically. So that way that these are, you know, they're separate videos and what I'll do is I'll actually link to them here. Do subscribe if you like what's going on with the channel folks and hit the notification bell if you wanna get notified. Give the video a like if you found the information useful. And of course, I will see you in the next video and thank you for watching.